Bangladesh Association of Pharmaceutical Industries, learned uh, panelist, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. I was supposed to speak for about half an hour, but the moderator said only 10 minutes. Uh, let's see. Uh, the slides, please. It was initially prepared as a uh, as a session for pharmaceuticals, but later on, a BCCI asked me to include other uh, healthcare issues. Mizan, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, you have you have probably heard many times uh, during many other deliberations that Bangladesh is going through a time which was never before and will never be in future. So this demographic dividend time is now, and this would continue until 2050. So I think this is the best time for us to work hard to make our country a prosperous and fully developed country. Next, please. I would like to give you some idea about the development of pharmaceutical industry in Bangladesh. This is uh, a uh, knowledge-driven industry, and that is how only people who graduated in the Western world, they came back and established very small pharmaceutical industries. And this is how it started uh, in Bangladesh. And then in 1970 until, until 1989, a large number of local entrepreneurs in the new country, many different factories were, were established. And from 1990 onwards, uh, actually we have <clears throat> started a journey for self-reliance, and this is when and where the pharma industry actually became very robust, uh, technology-driven, and uh, self-sufficient. Next. Now we have 265 industries, 213 are operation. Next, please keep on going. Uh, this is very interesting slide that if you see only 30 companies actually controls almost approaches to 100% of the market. 98% of the market is enjoyed by 30 different companies. So if you take, if we can take care of the quality standard, which we are actually doing, only 30 companies, then the quality standard of the medicines in our country uh, could be just class A, which is what is currently happening. Next. Local production is 97 and probably approaching 99% now. Next, please. And, uh, but if you compare with other, other countries, then you would see uh, most of the countries of the world are actually dependent for import, including countries like United States and UK and many other European countries. They are actually dependent on imported pharmaceuticals. Next. The, this would require probably an, a, a big session of discussion, how, how and why different kind of things are happening throughout the world. Although you see the total market is 3.32 billion with a growth rate of 4%, this was actually a, a narrow view because of COVID and subsequent war. So that's why you are not uh, looking into the right pharmaceutical growth. Next slide, please. You can see this. Starting from 2006, the market was only 0.57 million, a billion. That is 570 billion. Now it is more than 3.5 uh, 3 billion. So actually from 2006 to 2022, the market grew more than five times, almost six times. So you can imagine how things are moving. And because of the last three years, economic depression, I think the growth wasn't as good as we expected. So in future, we are likely to see the normal growth, which we expect to be cumulative, 15%. Next. This would take the market in 2027-28, more close to $7 billion. Next. 
And we produce virtually all kind of uh, pharmaceutical products, uh, be it tablets or very advanced products like uh, lyophilized injection, prefilled syringes, DPI, you name it, we virtually manufacture everything. Inhalers, next. <coughs> next, please, this is not required. So what we would like to emphasize that Bangladesh pharma industry is able to make high quality, complex, and virtually every single kind of products. This is not a small feat. Actually, our technology preparedness and present base is as good as any advanced, fully developed country. So this is a very important parameter to look at, that the present pharma industry in Bangladesh are completely developed and can manufacture virtually every single kind of doses forms, and they are highly advanced. If you really want to go into next year, then we have to pay attention to only one area, which we are not currently paying, is medical devices and administrative issues. So if we can take care of these two, I think we will discuss amongst ourselves so that we can look into the delivery systems, which is a little bit of complex engineering, you can, and it's not very difficult to do it, and it is not very capital intensive, but if we pay attention to this, then the complete area of pharmaceutical advanced doses forms, delivery system, latest technology, everything will come under the umbrella of Bangladesh pharmaceutical industry. Next. We are approved by virtually almost all uh, stringent regulatory bodies, and many companies are in, uh, in the process of getting into there. So most of these 30 companies eventually can achieve complete uh, uh, regulatory approval from stringent regulatory bodies. Next. We, we have future opportunities where we have already landed in biosimilar vaccine, active pharmaceuticals, and uh, export for the global generic market. So this is something where many countries are not even dreaming of going there, but Bangladesh already reached there, and we have already started producing these products. Next. Uh, these are the examples of biosimilars and biologics, next. And we are also producing many different vaccines, like 11 different vaccines and four immuno products, next. And uh, we are also working on API project. This is the next big thing that Bangladesh Oshud Shilpo Samiti is actually doing. We are developing an API park uh, where we have, we have taken the biggest possible challenge for any API industry is uh, the ETP, incinerator, and other facilities by which we would be able to produce products is still uh, protecting our environment. Next. <clears throat> BAPI will aim to produce about 800 to 1,000 uh, API molecules, and most of these products under the umbrella of 27 uh, companies will have, hopefully, uh, DMF or EDMF, so that we would be on a CEP uh, grade material so that we can actually export all over the world. Next. Now, this is something interesting where uh, people would think that they have said to address it, what will happen after uh, graduation uh, into a middle-income country? And there is another one debate which is extremely important for a country like ours, that whether we are getting into middle-income uh, trap. So Bangladesh pharmaceutical industry is actually the answer for both of these two problems. Bangladesh pharmaceutical industry, I would say, is completely immune uh, for, uh, as far as export is concerned for post-graduation after 2026. It will actually not affect, but it will do affect into the affordability of some of the new uh, products that are going to be under patent and will be introduced throughout the world. But this is a totally different ball game and probably require a very big session for discussions, but I will touch upon it very in a, in a small way uh, 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 when, it, when the time comes. But I would like to say the answer 
uh, to middle income trap lies on development of industrial sectors like pharmaceutical, which is highly knowledge based and it is not going to be affected by a rise of wages by the people because our value addition is going to be tremendously high and we'd be selling to all over the world at a price which is competitive and comparable to any industrialized, highly industrialized nation. So if we can build up a robust pharmaceutical industry, including uh, all other subsectors, which I said that API, biosimilars, vaccines, and complex generics, and generics export all over the world, this will help Bangladesh avoid middle income trap. And the income level and the earning that we are going to get is going to be at par with the global standard, and it will take us towards a developed country. Next. Uh, this is uh, the global uh, pharmaceutical spending. Uh, this is something interesting that you see 1.5 trillion dollars, where generic market is about 500, including uh, branded generics. But the real share of pure generics that are practiced in Western Europe and North America, the value addition uh, or the bottom line is actually are very frustrating. Uh, we were discussing with our colleagues, especially with Rabureja this morning, uh, who was also showing me data uh, for Mr. Nadmul Hassan. He has prepared some data where surprisingly we see the top line for generic products uh, is increasing in Western world and uh, regulated markets but the bottom line is actually squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. So if this thing continues, we have to pay attention for our export into the emerging market and branded generic markets. So this is a smart way of increasing profitability, but still remaining competitive. Uh, this is also a very interesting session. Uh, I think uh, in BAPI we'll, we'll look into this issue uh, so that we can prepare our member companies to look into how we can continue to create an environment by which we will keep our industry highly healthy and growing. Next, please. This is pure generic market. It's about 300 uh, to 400 billion. Next, please. Uh, then this is the branded generic markets, which is about another uh, 400 billion. Uh, next, please. Uh, we... Now, what is the competitive advantage of Bangladesh? We have one thing that we have achieved. Uh, this is something, a mental game. Until and unless you believe that you are able to succeed, you would never be able to uh, get success. So thank God, over the next 30 years, we have built up these characteristics within our DNA that Bangladesh pharmaceutical industry is capable and it will succeed. And thank God, as we go and uh, uncover new frontiers into the uh, Western world, we see our capabilities actually very strong. And we have started winning, and this path we will continue to grow, go forward, and will bring more and more prosperity for Bangladesh. So this is because of our confidence, level of technology, human resources, and of course we speak English, not like many other countries where it is a difficult situation. So thanks to our colonial legacy. Next. Uh, Bangladesh uh, exports to 100 and maybe now over 80 countries. These are encompassing, encompassing every single continent of the world. Next. Well, these are the uh, uh, countries uh, that uh, when I prepared the slide, but it's ever increasing. Next. The, the issue is, many people would argue that your export figure is only 188 million compared to your target of 100 billion. So how, why are you talking about uh, pharmaceutical? It's just almost like a dot into the ocean. But remember, pharmaceutical takes very, 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 very long time. 
I mean, if you start today only, maybe after five years, you are able to make the head start. And after another five years time, you are going to uh, see the result. So this is the journey we have started. And hopefully, uh, this figure in no time would turn into billions, inshallah. Next. You would see that some people have already started saying that very soon we are likely to have a half a billion dollar market. And uh, I think with API industry, vaccines and biosimilars and complex uh, pharmaceuticals coming into uh, place, this figure is going to go forward very soon. For the young uh, professionals, I would like to mention something, a very interesting information, uh, which I was sharing with Rabbu uh, this morning as well. If you look into the global API industry, it is about 260 billion. India uh, exports something like 20 billion. So there are, there is still 240 billion is actually being catered by uh, uh, the developed nation. And it did not shift uh, into developing nation. China is selling a lot of uh, solvents and intermediates, but the actual value addition that are being done in the Western world, I think we need to look at this by molecular, molecule by molecule, and many of them uh, probably is uh, sources as a CMO by the uh, brand companies, so that we have to take outside this $270 billion equation. Then we look into how much is there for pure generic and pure API, and also there is a big part of it which is excipients. So by analyzing these two areas, we would like to give directions to our API industry as to where and what products that we are going to do so that very quickly we can go to 20 to 30 billion dollars worth of export in case of API. So these are the two things that we need to uh, set our eyes on and this is going to open a fantastic window for us to go forward next. Many of us are very, very concerned about uh, LDC graduation. Mr. Chairman, is it uh, getting late? Should I do it even faster? Sorry, but I'm taking yeah. a... No, no, yeah. Yeah. Go yeah, okay, thank you, because otherwise people will not be able to get the what is it. Okay, so... Yeah, thank you. LDC, uh, actually, this is where Mr. Nadmul Hassan is working. Please, next uh, uh, slide, please. Uh, actually, uh, the patent law that has been passed a few days back uh, would require certain dressing. And uh, uh, our uh, president, Mr. Nadmul Hassan, assured us that he has been working with global experts and things are also uh, in the right perspective. And hopefully, the weaknesses that we have in our present patent law would be uh, solved. And once this is done, then I think we would be able to solve two different areas that products which are under patent but has been introduced within the country, we should be able to continue to enjoy patent-free uh, situation for our country. And what will happen after uh, 2026? This is an, another, next slide please. This is an issue, uh, next slide please. Uh, this is an issue which has been uh, addressed by our Honorable Prime Minister uh, during her meeting in LDC in Qatar. Next. So she said that we, we should be able to extend it for the next six years, starting from 226 to 33. If that happens, then we would able, we'd be able to continue to make it, but we keep our finger crossed, we really do not know. So what will happen? Uh, I think with the recommended patent law revision, we should be able to continue to enjoy uh, the patent-free regime for those products which are under patent but has been introduced within the country. But for some complex biologics and very new products, we may not be able to solve the problem until and unless we go for other analog research, but that's a different ball game. Uh, uh, but for those products, we have to buy at higher prices. But fortunately, that is not going to be even 0.2 to 3% of the total market. And the patented products 
prices would be unfortunately expensive next. Now, as, as I said already that our Honorable Prime Minister said that negotiation would be going on from now onwards so that we can extend it for next six years. Next. This I have already said next. Okay. Uh, this is what I was uh, trying to uh, tell you before, that if after the post-LDC, Bangladesh would be able to very well integrate with, with the global uh, pharmaceutical market because actually the products that we are producing, exporting to the rest of the world, many of them, I would, not, I would not be wrong if I say most of them are not under patent at this moment. Only things which we are producing but still patented, they are virtually used for Bangladesh only and to other LDC countries next. So this will continue, but our emphasis should be for generic drugs in addition to Western regulated market. We should also focus on potential API markets. This is extremely important uh, because while many of the countries have very robust and good formulation industry, they lack API industry. And that is why we need keen attention from the government and all other similar bodies so that we can promote our sales of API to these countries like countries in Latin America, Indonesia, Pakistan, Egypt, Kenya, and many other small, small countries where, including let's say Jordan, they are big consumer of API but they do not have virtually any API industry. This can open up such a, such a big opportunity for our API industry that is going to revolutionize everything that we are currently doing next. Robust pharmaceutical sector of API and biologic manufacturing facility in addition to synthetic small molecules in terms of skilled manpower and cost, very few countries will be able to compete with Bangladesh. This particular statement, I think, is a golden statement for me that this is what is going to propel our pharma industry into the next sphere because no other country except, let's say, except China, which are not interested, they are very much interested in their local uh, market, India, and uh, Western world, except these only few countries, no other country is as good as Bangladesh. So Bangladesh has a tremendous amount of opportunity. The other thing that we need to work on, we do not have enough time, 23, 24, 25, only three years, we should introduce as many patented products as possible so that we can generate enough stability data and other data prepare our dossier so that we can file it in mass into the regulated market for fast to file products. If we can, uh, let's say, uh, apply for 20 products that will make these pharmaceutical companies bring so much of profit uh, that next 10 years it would be difficult for us. So that we should do very carefully. Next. I think I clarified this matter. People who are in the regulatory affairs, they would understand this. Fast to file. Not many countries in the world has pharmaceuticals manufacturing capability like Bangladesh, as I said. India is considered as pharmacy of the world, but I have already mentioned, although India is pharmacy of the world, but look into this, out of 260 billion API market, they only sell 20 billion. So there is a huge, huge untapped market which can be looked at. Mm -hmm. India is, uh, and also everybody is thinking and Let's say with the economic development of India, with lower and lower bottom line, many Indian companies are in fact watching and they are saying that why not let's, let's supply first into the emerging market and India, only then we give it to the regulated market. So this one is going to give us an, another added advantage so that we become a reliable supplier of products. If you look into USFDA website now, right now, you'd see more than 300 products are in short supply throughout the Europe, 
there are many products which are in, even sodium chloride injection, they don't get it for flushing uh, the IV uh, injection site. So this is a nightmare uh, for the regulators in Europe and in the uh, United States. If you want to pay a manufacturer only 5% profit, 7% profit, this is what you are going to get. So it is a time for us to pre get prepared so that we can take the next advantage. Next, please. There is another one issue which I would like uh, you to pay attention to. Uh, this is kind of sensitive information. We see, uh, the, I, I'll quickly finish it, yeah. We see that uh, China, um, in, in geopolitical situation, uh, there are regulations by which Chinese export is going to face headwinds. So in these cases, we will also have more and more opportunities. Next, please. Uh, so this is, uh, I have already explained. Next, please. Next, please. Okay. Uh, this was actually meant for pharmaceutical industries, but later on, uh, Preeti Chakraborty uh, called me and she said that this is, we are also included healthcare, so I'd like to say a few words about healthcare industry as well. Uh, in addition to pharmaceuticals, other healthcare sectors offer huge opportunities for the growth. This is specialized diagnostics, specialized tertiary care hospitals, medical and hospital equipment, nursing and medical education. Next. We should take care, currently, some specialized diagnostic tests, like most of the advanced ones, uh, we have to go outside. So there is a tremendous opportunity for high-end specialized diagnostics in our country. So please come and invest. Next. And also, BIDA says uh, 3 to $3.5 billion worth of uh, expenditure we do uh, for treatment outside the country. So we need very high-end specialized hospital in Bangladesh so that this can be arrested. Next. Also, Bangladesh imports most of the medical equipment, which is per year about almost 400 million. And <coughs> healthcare industry is growing very fast. So we need to establish this industry so that we can supply to our hospitals and healthcare industry. Next. Bangladesh. Uh, uh, healthcare industry has reached 6.7 billion in 2018 uh, with a growth set of 10%. This is a bit of information. To meet this high demand, we need many doctors and nurses. So we would request all concerned to invest in medical institution and nurse training institution. Next. In conclusion, I would like to say Bangladesh has surplus human resources for pharma industry. Many of the companies have received regulatory approvals, which will make us a global supplier of medicine. There are visible competitive advantages for Bangladesh in global market. Next, Bangladesh pharma industry aims to capture 10% of the global market, and seven to nine country, country, companies have already achieved uh, many approvals. New opportunities are coming for API, biosimilar vaccine, oncology products, and many other advanced products. Next. Healthcare market is 170 million, 470 million uh, people continuously increasing. Bangladesh needs huge investment to cater this emerging need. Next. So Bangladesh is becoming a major global hub for high quality, low cost, generic products and healthcare uh, services as well. So uh, next. So let's invest in Bangladesh and make it a prosperous country. Thank you. No, 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 no. Thank you, uh, Mr. Abdul Muqtadir. I know you can speak on these topics for the whole day. I, I have the opportunity to work with you on pharmaceutical sector, so I know the in depthness of your knowledge in this area. Uh, but sorry, due to time constraint, we could not allow you much time. But it was really a very good and informative presentation. You gave us the current situation. You also gave us where we like to go. Thank you. Thank you for. May I now go to our panelist? Our first panelist is Dr. Yun Tam, and he is the co-founder, president, and CSO in Senoveda Canadian Corporation. Uh, I know you are in this business for a long, long time. So, would you please like to tell me what is the now current investment uh, scenario in the pharmaceutical sectors? What are the regional? And, uh, issues in the investment. What are the products, particularly the upcoming in the investment arena, and how we can tap those opportunity in Bangladesh? Thank you very much.
As soon as they pick the slide, may we go for the next speaker. So by this time they will, uh, because I'm in a very troubled situation in between of the lunch and uh, in between of the presentation and lunch. So, uh, but uh, you could speak less than we can have more lunch. Uh, May I now request Mr. Uh, Debo, uh, Debo Jyoti Banerjee, country head, um, Metronautic Bangladesh Private Limited. Uh, sir, you have three minutes to say the Bangladesh perspectives. I think you can supplement uh, uh, Mr. Muktadir on this issue. Thank you very much. So, thank you so much for making me uh, a part of this and thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. Um, I represent a medical device company which has been led by 10 years by someone who was born out of this country, Dr. Omar Ishraq. And it is phenomenal to be back in this, into this country and lead this businesses. Healthcare, specifically the medical devices segment, close to 90% is imported into Bangladesh. And there is tremendous potential for this to be improved. As an organization, I can tell you, 95% of the global technology which is available across the developed nations is available in Bangladesh today. So there is actually no need for any of the Bangladeshi patients to travel to any of the other countries. But still, but still, during COVID, during lockdown, India earned $500 million out of Bangladeshi patients being treated out there. And that is alarming and that is something which we need to take care of. So in short, if we do three things, number one, give a very conducive environment for organizations like Medtronic to come and invest and possibly start a manufacturing unit out here. Number two, even if that's not possible, let's harmonize <coughs> imports, let's create no barriers towards importing these medical devices. We have made conscious attempts of ensuring that no Bangladeshi patient under any circumstances has a problem, has a fiscal issue towards getting treated. When I joined this industry about 15 years back, my goal was only one thing. Healthcare can never be a privilege. It has to be a right. It can never be a privilege in anybody's life. And if we work towards it, I think Bangladesh is already working towards it, we can actually create wonders. If there is such a huge pharmaceutical industry, there is no reason as to why a medical devices industry should be like, you know, 10% of what a pharmaceutical industry is or maybe 5% of what it is. Look at around you. If you go to hospitals, trust me, I am from India, but I've been in this country for the past one and a half years. There is no dearth of technology, no dearth of medical equipment, no dearth of trained people to use that particular product. So amongst us, we should always figure out a way of ensuring and increasing the trust in Bangladesh healthcare system, thereby we can actually create a system which will be second to none across the globe. Thank you. Thank you. Really, you finish within ten, three minutes time. So that's a, you deserve a special appreciation. Uh, now I, I understand that the presentation from uh, for Dr. Yoon is ready. So over to you, Dr. Yoon. Uh, it was a very good introduction uh, by the gentleman over there in the Inceptor uh, talking about the, the landscape of the pharmaceutical industry in Bangladesh. 
Now, as a Canadian coming here, going through the slides before I came to this particular platform, something struck me. Something struck me is Bangladesh has a very established generic pharmaceutical industry. It is focusing on the API. It is trying to, is trying to get the, uh, the generic system and having the government to work on postponing the IPs. Now, I think that Bangladesh is much bigger than that. It's much better than that. Why is it? Because in all the countries around the world, if you want to progress, innovation is a must. It has to be there, and I think that the industry can go over there. Now, when I was looking at that, IP is the number one thing. API is another thing. And then I look at it here as a Chinese origin, although I'm Canadian, and then we are looking at botanicals. It, is, it has more than 500 plant medicines in Bangladesh, 250 of which are being used. Now, one may say that you are, in the, you are talking to the pharmaceutical experts here, okay? And what do you have that uh, the pharmaceutical industry can use? And what about consumer health products? Can plant medicine be actually be able to admit to the mainstream? Okay, now this is the key thing. If it can be, that means that there will be intellectual properties that are going to go along with it. Next slide, please. Now, let's look at it here because we are in a business and I know that we want to make sure that healthcare can be provided to everyone equally, but let's see as an industry, can we make money out of this? In the consumer health product world, as we speak right now, the market size is about $360 billion as we speak. It's going to double in about eight years. So this is a huge market size. What about herbal medicine? Herbal medicine is last year is $150 billion and it's going to double in 2029. These are numbers not to be sneezed at. How can we take advantage of it? What are the drivers and what are the limitations of these herbal medicine? The drivers are that it's an aging population, chronic diseases are all there, pain all over the aching bodies, and and uh, you know the uh, the uh, and uh, the the, uh, the herbal medicine is economical. The limitations are, as a pharmaceutical scientist myself, and I look at the herbal medicine, the quality is not there. The reason why it's not there because the active ingredients are not known. And also from crop to crop, the profile of the active ingredients is also deviant. So from a drug standpoint, it's not acceptable. Not in my books. Next slide, please. So our company, Sinoveda, is built on a platform technology. What we are trying to do is that we are trying to develop combination drugs. What it means is that these are, the term is used for pharmaceutical scientists. Okay, in actual fact that what we are trying to do is trying to provide an answer the, to a question. The question is that if the herbs or herbal formulas were to work, there must be compounds in there that are responsible. Can we find that out in a very efficient manner? And in our company, we have incorporated AI and data, massive data mining. We can mine these active ingredients in as short as eight weeks, okay, before we can validate it with our experiment to show that this actually work. Now, one point that I'd like to make here is that if you do find a group of active ingredients, these ingredients are patentable, provided that you can show that they can act synergistically. So if they are patentable, we have IP. If you are IP, you can protect it. Now, the API industry is so strong, and also is the agricultural industry in Bangladesh. Can we take advantage of both? I think the answer is yes, so we can go from there. 
Now the development time and cost using this particular method is a small fraction of the conventional pharmaceutical development. And what I'm talking about is a couple of million dollars versus $600 million for preclinical development. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, we also developed a, uh, a business model. So in a drug development process, I would call it a very low risk uh, entry. Now, what we are trying to do is that because these are herbal medicines, and we could easily make it into a first into a consumer health product. Once we did that, and what we could do is to put it on the market, sell it, of course, that other than generating revenues, we can test the efficacy and as well as the toxicity. Now, if you have data, human data like this, it will allow us to go into the botanical pharmaceutical track in America, in Canada, and also in the European Union. That will turn into a pharmaceutical drug. Now, in this case, it's a combination drug. The origin is from plants. Okay, so this is just like another drug. Next slide, please. So in, then you may ask, everybody knows that the, in, in a herb, it is such a complex mixture. Okay, trying to find and harness the active ingredients, it is very difficult. Have you done that before? Do you know how to do it? Can you see the hurdles in front of you? Now, I'm glad to hear, I'm glad to show you that um, about 10 hours ago, the Oscar just happened, and two of our consumer health products were selected to, to go into the swag bag uh, for, the, for the different uh, actor, actresses and also the, uh, the, uh, the winners of the, of the Oscar. So the way that the, the process of selecting these products is quite vigorous. For us to make it there, we are very proud. And Thank you. Uh, so we could do it. The next one is that I'm even more excited about uh, is we developed a long COVID treatment uh, from Mr. medical Yun, food, a Chinese uh, we medicine. We have to finish it within a minute because yeah. the time okay. is running out very fast. Okay, all right. So that here that we have developed a, a medical food treating co long COVID and it's going to go under the market in Hong Kong starting next month. Next one, please. So the AI that we incorporated, mine the data and look at the mechanisms of action in actual fact that our product can treat and deal with the major uh, symptoms like virus, fatigue, brain fog, and uh, the immune system and so on. Next slide, please. So the results, our preliminary results is very is phenomenal. And the before and then after treatment, you could see that the, the, the subjects almost recovered after two days doses. Next slide. I think that, I think that uh, what I, I hope that I can convince you that we could have a drug candidates here, but we now put it onto the market as a consumer health product, and later on we can develop that into a drug. So this is a very low risk investment into drug production. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Yoon, for your very informative presentation about the healthcare products. Uh, but uh, due to a constant of time, we could not do justice to you, but we will be eager to listen to you. I think my colleague will be in kit it will be in touch with you to know more about this. Uh, at this stage, may I now request Dr. Riyad Mamun Pradhani uh, from MD and CEO Novartis. Would you please let us know the global trends of the pharmaceutical product and how Bangladesh can take advantage from those? Thank you, over to you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, 25 years back when I joined this industry as a product manager, we used to do like this trap plan for 10 years. Like 15, 12 years back when I was a marketing head, we started doing strat plan for five years. 
And now, as a CEO of the company, we do strat plan for only three years. So it's <laughs> the reason this is happening, because the trends are changing very fast. And uh, Madam, you asked me about to comment on the trends. Sometimes it's not very safe to ra ride on the trend. Rather, focus on the strengths. Uh, nevertheless, I would comment on three or you know, a couple of obvious trends that's there in the global pharma domain. One is digital health that um, embraces both area pharmaceuticals and healthcare delivery areas. Everything is getting digitalized. And the responsibility of a pharma company is not confined only within manufacturing a pill or an injection. It's beyond that. And how digital can ease the outcome of the treatment is the main element of this, uh, this, this topic. And the second is uh, drug development. I think this is very important. The drug development uh, has be become a, a, a priority area and the companies are focusing on how they can reduce the timeline of drug development. Previously, you know, one drug used to take like 15, 16, 20 years to develop. Now, with blockchain, you know, the data platform, et cetera, and with all integrations, the finding the right target timeline has gone very short, and probably you have noticed, and linking with that, you know, the disruptive, you know, solutions are coming very fast. And that is the reason, you know, after one new molecule, another new molecule is coming uh, within a short time, and the patent durations are going shorter and shorter. So uh, this has become an implication, but as we speak today, there are 1,000 over products of biologic are waiting for in the you know, development phase, 1,000 over. And this old product, over a certain period of time, would come as off patent, and the biosimilars would enter market. I think we, we, we know why we, why we are referring this. We have a very strong connection you know, when these products would go off patent, we as a country, and we have a very solid base of generic uh, drug experience, need to definitely ride on that wave. And the third one is um, a sustainable and environmentally and socially responsible business model. All these three would eventually couple into a call for partnerships, co-creations. If some of you have seen, like, I I'm really happy, a uh, few minutes back, these two gentlemen were talking, they were talking about partnerships. The future of <laughs> this very disruptive industry is going to be partnership. Nobody can do everything, you know, in a, in a you know, including uh, in, uh, considering the entire life cycle of the medicine. The life cycle is going to be shorter, and that's the reason everybody has to work collaboratively so that the maximum benefit of the innovations reaches the last point uh, of the globe. So um, I think on that ground, with this solid pharma industry, Bangladesh is rightly positioned uh, to have this partnership uh, in a very strong way uh, with, with, you know, in the global value chain. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Comprehensive but very succinct information very short, within a very short time. May I now request Mr. Rajustri Desharkar Vice President and General Manager, Novo Nordic Bangladesh. Uh, would you please uh, uh, highlight about the opportunity of the healthcare facilities in Bangladesh and how your company is experienced in this regard? Can you share your experience of your company? Thank you very much. Over to you. But I'll request you to finish within three minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank ABCCI for this opportunity to share. It was a fantastic presentation by Mr. Muktadir, highlighting about the uh, phenomenal growth of pharma industry in Bangladesh. And uh, he being here for the last one and a half years, I acknowledge the big contribution that Bangladesh pharmaceutical industry has made because I have witnessed uh, it in several times and even during the COVID crisis in India, I, I even personally received a few phone, call, phone calls from my colleagues about whether the pharmaceutical industry from Bangladesh can supply them to India. So that only speaks about how it has developed. And I was very impressed with the way the COVID vaccination was managed in Bangladesh. Uh, you can 
trust me on this. So this makes me feel that Bangladesh has actually moved ahead, way ahead in managing the diseases in Bangladesh quite nicely. Uh, but this is a country with 169 million patients and the, and the burden of disease is also very high. Uh, I cannot elaborate on the various diseases that have, the prevalence of diseases in Bangladesh, but I can talk about uh, slightly on diabetes, which itself is 1.3 crores of patients who are living with diabetes in Bangladesh. This is an official number. And official estimates will be much higher than this, maybe double in fact. But uh, way forward, which I feel is uh, everyone is talking about partnership, and I believe that to embrace partnership, to embrace innovation, to embrace technology, to embrace quality. And here I would like to set the example what Novo Nordisk has done in Bangladesh. Actually, we have collaborated and partnered with another leading pharmaceutical company in Bangladesh known as SK Pharmaceuticals, where we have set up our own manufacturing unit here with them, and uh, which will enable us to ensure uninterrupted supply of quality, innovative medicines for all types of patients in Bangladesh. We have products at various price points. You know, this will not only ensure the supply of insulin in Bangladesh, but will also ensure that it is, will be exported to other countries also in the days to come. So this means that partnership helps a lot. And partnership brings in innovation. And I'm sure when you speak to colleagues from SKF, they will tell you how this partnership has actually helped them in, in developing their image across the world. And, and bringing innovation, bringing research, bringing clinical trials in the country is what Novo Nordisk plans to do in the future. Because when you bring in clinical trials, when you, when you collaborate with the multinational companies, and they bring in this research, the benefit that has the physicians, the doctors, they are able to get the benefit of the best in class medicines, innovative medicines for their patients when, the, when they're tested through these trials. And ever and above, such trials have their own benefits in future. While we were all concerned about what is the way forward after 2026, as Mr. Muktadir was uh, making his presentation and share his concerns and planning how to steer Bangladesh as an economy ahead, as a country ahead to manage these challenges, uh, I would always uh, embark upon that it is a focus on R&D, it is a focus on innovation that can help the country. Why only we think of only making of API? Of course, we become an API hub and we export it to other countries. But along with this, I would also suggest that can we add one more point? Why not we add the originator product in that list? Why not Bangladesh with such great talents? I know uh, many of my colleagues whom I come to know and know their relatives, there is a huge migration of talents to other countries, to Canada, to USA, because they are very good brains who are able to work in research in those places. So why not hold these brains back use them in our research. I was attending a session some minutes back here where one of the scientists was presenting a paper was talking about why not the pharmaceutical industry you know, collaborate with these brains from, from the various universities and, and progress in the research and development. I think that would be one step ahead for, for Bangladesh industry, pharmaceutical industry to take it forward to make sure that not only they are, they are big in API, they are uh, ensuring supply of, uh, of patented product, but also why not apply for patents by developing drugs here itself? Why we not think in this way? Because as an organization, we know in Novo Nordisk, we, uh, we had in a company who is already 100 years old. And one of the reason because we are 100 years, because completely focused on innovation to bring in better products for the benefit of patients. We were talking about sustainability. The previous session was a circular economy. You will be happy to know that we use injectable devices and we have already started circulating them. Uh, you know, in, in countries like Denmark, in UK, our injectable devices are being recycled. So, so we also focus on that. And we believe that in the days to come, Bangladesh, uh, in, the, in the pharmaceutical industry of Bangladesh, Nubonotis can partner a lot with knowledge, with technology, with uh, innovation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sharkar, for very comprehensive knowledge about the business in this healthcare sector. Now we have the last, but not the least, uh, our panelist, whom we all know for a long time. She is the pioneer in the gynecological treatment in Bangladesh, Dr. Shahala Khatun, founder, Green Life Hospital, and national professor. Uh, Madam, over to you. Uh, but since the, everybody is waiting for the lunch, I'll humbly request you to make it as short as possible. Thank you very much. Health industry is a branch of economy concerned mainly with efficiency, effectiveness,
value, behavior on pro of production, consumption of health and healthcare services. Aim is to improve the health of our people, our countries. Also, I said, Vishwabashi. We are living longer to 70 up. I'm 80 up. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, and new diseases are coming. Short time is very short. I'm not going to say the diseases, but probably you all know what types of diseases are coming. And we have to tackle those diseases too. And for that reason, what we need, we need a very comprehensive Shasta Vyavasta, where we can get the things for screening, for diagnosis, for management, and prevention. Shegula Jonno Amade Dorkar, World Shate Tal Mile Jetegele, we need all those, those newly advances of technology. Jegula Akane Jara Apnara Achen, on a Beshi Amateke Jan and Jiki Dorkar. I mean, Jara, who are present here, you have come here also to help us. I know I'm the Jani Bhalokore, India and China, Edik the Otonto high position, but Tadir users on a connect Beshi. Shay Tulonai, I'm the third position, a chick into Amadir Kitunai, Shotikota Boltegel, or some of device of her, Unnoto, all devices Amadir Olpo. We want the Apnarajara, those who are present here, Shadike, you will take care and you will invest. I'm not a business lady or an investor or nothing, really. I'm just a simple doctor. But my aim is to, and, we, and my appeal to all of you, you are to help us. Amrahato Adurba Bishote Bolchi, sustainable Deshad Modde Cholejabo, but unless and until we get those things, if we cannot really provide our people good health and active life, Amra kichu korte So I mean, appeal korbo to all those who are sitting here, that they come out there, they are like an eschen, protect ke, amader, a industry theke, jate Amra arak tu bariye ni the pari, apna shajono you will invest and definitely. Shete amade upakar hobe, wong apna der shaman, fame and name will also be bora hoye jabe. Thank you, shabai ke, and specially thanks to the those sitting here. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam, for your very informative and very <coughs> good suggestion to your young generation. Uh, now we came to the uh, last session of our the last speaker to our session is our. Chief guest of this occasion. Uh, I know he can tell, I, I know him for more than 20 years in this business, and I learned a lot about the pharmaceutical industry, about the TRIPS agreement from you since 2003. Um, so I uh, request you to tell us how we can move forward with the current situation of the industry. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, we are running late, so I'll be quick as much as possible. We have already seen that uh, the pharmaceutical sector in Bangladesh has done excellent job since 98% of the total country's requirement of medicines are locally manufactured. Bangladesh is also one of the cheapest source of quality medicines to be found anywhere in the world. And finally, so far pharmaceutical is concerned, uh, after meeting the local demand, we are also exporting to 150 countries uh, across all the four continents. And for the last 12 years, we're exporting to even the most stringent regulatory market like US, USA. Uh, so we have the capability. Uh, so that's one thing. Healthcare sector has improved, has also made remarkable success in Bangladesh. And uh, if you look at the key health indicators like uh, life, expect life expectancy, uh, maternal mortality rate, infant mortality, we are doing, we are even ahead of our, we are not only ahead of our 
neighboring countries, but also ahead of India. So that's no less an achievement. So what we are, so we have, we have to, the basic reason what I think we should concentrate now is not what we have been doing, but the challenges that we are uh, going to face in the future. You see, graduation from LDC has never been smooth for any country in the world. There will be challenges, and the only thing we can do is to prepare ourselves to face those post-LDC challenges. For example, I'll give you an example. Bangladesh, I think Beximco, uh, when Beximco launched the first genic version of Gilead's antiviral pill, Sofosbir, at $10, we made global media headlines. Same is the case when we uh, launched the first generic version of uh, Remdesivir during the COVID-19, Paxlovid, Molnupiravir. Now we can do, we could do that best because as an LDC, we were legally allowed to manufacture any patented product, sell it in the domestic market, and also export to other LDC countries. But once we graduate from LDC to a middle income group, we can't do it anymore. Now, just think, uh, the antiviral pill I'm, I was talking about, it's cost $1,000 anywhere per pill. Beximco launched it at $10 per pill. So the major, the major challenge, and same goes with Remdesivir, and it was, there was so huge crisis, even in the developed countries, for these medicines during the COVID-19 that we have seen. Uh, that uh, one was it was very highly priced, and secondly, it was not available. Even if somebody wanted to pay for it, it was not possible. So these were the type of advantages that we used to enjoy as an LDC. But as I said, once we graduate, we can't do it anymore. Now, so the major problem that we are probably going to see uh, is in the pharmaceutical sector. When we talk about opportunities, opportunities, yes, there are opportunities. Whether we graduate or not, there are opportunities. I'm not denying that. But what I'm saying, uh, the first and foremost will be access to essential medicines. Uh, that will be a big challenge because when we need it, we, may not be, we will not be allowed to manufacture it anymore. Secondly, it's, second is affordability. The prices will be so high that it won't be affordable to our general mass. But having said that, now I'm concluding. Having said that, there are also a lot of opportunities. You see, we were successful in making those products. Why? Number one. First, you need to have a state-of-the-art R&D facility to strengthen our reverse engineering capabilities, and that we have proved we can do. Within a week time when the product was introduced in the world market, we launched it in Bangladesh. I mean, that's how strong we are in reverse engineering. That's one. Number two, we have facilities. Now our facilities are approved by the most stringent regulatory authorities like US FDA, UK HRA, TG Australia, Anvisa Brazil, Canada, I mean, everywhere. So we can now, it is a proven that we can produce quality medicines. So there is no issue to that. And that gives us a good advantage. Since our manufacturing cost is still low, you see, Generic, we are essentially generic manufacturer, and generic sells on price. Quality is a must in pharmaceuticals, so it's given. Uh, generic sells on price, and we are the cheapest. Our manufacturing cost is much lower. For example, white collar labor, blue collar labor, it's still very cheap in Bangladesh. It's still very cheap. I'm not saying it will remain cheap forever, but it's still very cheap. White collar labor in India was cheap. Over the last five years, if you compare uh, white collar labor from India, almost equivalent to European standards. They are very highly priced. 
blue collar labor china was cheap last 9 years it has gone up by more than 300% but in bangladesh we are still cheap so both white and blue collar labor we are cheap and since we are gas based our power cost is to one third to that of india and lowest in the whole world so these are some of the advantages which allows us to manufacture these pharmaceutical products at a lower cost now 150 billion dollar products are going to go off patent by 2030 my last concluding remarks uh, Whenever the patent expires, the innovator usually tends to outsource it because the price has to go down. I'll give you an example. GSK has outsourced 60% of its global manufacture of cephalosporine to Singapore because it was e cheaper to manufacture in Singapore than in UK. We are 40% or 50% cheaper than Singapore. Now, at that time, they didn't come to us because we didn't have plants and facilities which are certified by US FDA, UK, and TG Australia. Now that we have the capability, we have the facilities, we should try to get some share from the $150 billion worth of patented products which, which are going to go off patent. And even 10 to 15%, I don't, I, I personally believe it is. Of course, it is possible, and we should be able to do that. And uh, finally, uh, what I would say, we have one thing for sure. Forget about affordability, but availability. Even if we can want to pay, how do we get that? Uh, so there are two ways of technology transfer, as mentioned in the TRIPS agreement. Muhammad Shah Jalal Bachu, Director, ABCCI, to come to the stage and present the crest to our panelist guests, special guests, chief guests. A Tham, co-founder, president, and CSO, Sinaveda Canada, Inc. Next crest will be given to Mr. Devujyoti Banerjee, country head, Metronic Bangladesh Private Limited. Next crest will be given to Dr. Riyad Mahmood Prodhani, Managing Director and Country President, Novartis Bangladesh Limited. Next crest will be given to the National Professor Dr. Shala Khatun, Chairperson, Governing Body, Green Life Medical College. Next crest will be given to the keynote speaker, Mr. Abdul Muqtadi, Chairman and Managing Director, Inceptor Pharmaceuticals Limited. <laughs> now crest will be given to our session chair and moderator, Ms. Sharifa Khan, Secretary Economic Relations Division, Ministry of Finance, the Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh.
Now, Christy is given to Mr. Raju Sri Desh Sharkar, Vice President and General Manager, Novo Nordics, Bangladesh. Now, quick photo session. All the guests are requested to come forward for quick photo session. Ladies and gentlemen, after the photo session, we'll go for lunch. After lunch, then we'll have our next session. Thank you. 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 Thank you.